But you say he just a friend. You say he just a friend. Oh, baby, you. You got what I need. But you say he just a friend. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a thought-provoking conversation between Kevin Samuels and a 30-year-old caller. In this eye-opening discussion, Kevin challenged Ashley's unrealistic expectations regarding a partner's income and highlights the significance of respecting and appreciating average earning men. As the conversation unfolded, tensions rose, and Kevin's passionate defense of hardworking individuals who have contributed to society takes center stage. Get ready to explore the depths of societal expectations and discover a new perspective on valuing the unsung heroes who built our country. Okay. Hello? Jessica? Jaleesa? What's your disagreement? She and staying with Jay Z for years and him cheating on her. I just don't think you have to do all of that to get married. How old are you? I'm 30. Uh, and have you been married? I haven't. Uh huh. Do you want children? Yes. Uh, do you want to be married? Yes. I mean, children would you like? I want at least four. At 30 years old? I want to adopt a couple. They still I know I'm behind. They, they, I still, wanna, like, they still cost. Yeah. So how much man how much money would a man need to make in order to fund a family of six? I'm gonna say at least a hundred thousand. Because I'll be working too, so with our combined uh -huh. income. Uh-huh. And how much do you earn? Right now I earn sixty nine thousand. You can't support a family of six on a hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Well, I live in the South. I don't care. Better? You could nope. Okay. No. It's not better. And you still even if you plan on working again another woman that wants a man in the top ten percent of earners. And it doesn't matter. You still you st you still want the same things, but you're not willing to consider the fact that the man you're talking about is rare and has options. And like it or not, infidelity may come with a package. See, life is about trade-offs, ladies. And far too many of you ladies want perfect scenarios, almost perfect, and you're not perfect people. Um, you're in the South. How uh, how tall are you? I'm 5'3". Dress size? A six. <laughs> you do realize, oh, oh, Jesus. When did you take this picture? That was um for the election day last year. So and how much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? Um, last time I weighed myself, I was one sixty eight. And you say you're dressed size what? Six. No way. There's no way. It's true. It's true. Okay, I uh, okay, ma'am. Again, professional image consultant. Five foot three, dress size six would put you. Healthy weight at around 125. So I used to be that ma size and that was two four. Ma'am, I'm looking at your photo. Just like yeah. the other ladies in the chat room. And when you said what you said, they all started smiling because they knew you weren't being honest. <laughs> I am being honest. I used to be a size two four, and I was one twenty. Miss Carrington, thank you. Roxy, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> all the ladies are doing the same thing, and I'm trying to be. And important. Why is this important, ma'am? Because at thirty years old, when and how's the most you've ever weighed? The most I've ever weighed is right now, thanks to quarantine. This is the most I've ever weighed. Which I'm is useless. what? Which is what? One sixty eight. Uh huh. And if you had to rank yourself on a scale from one to ten, just your looks, what would you rank yourself? Um. You well, I've seven. been listening. I've been listening to your show, so I'm gonna say a six. No. 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 What would you say? Uh, what you what's been, what's been my what's been what's been the viral tagline? Average at best. <laughs> Can I at least be the queen of average? <laughs> well, the queen of average is the eternal seven. And what I'm trying to let you understand is this. 
<laughs> you came in and said, I don't think you would have to do all that with Beyonce. Well, Beyonce got a high value man. And you may not want a multimillionaire, but you still want a high value man. Yes, correct. And you are average at best. <laughs> and above average and below and below average as far as the fitness. This is so this is delicate as I can put it. Average at best, below average in the fitness. There's no way you are dress size six. You're every bit of a 10. 12. Every bit. Okay. See, somebody who's a dress size six would fight me on that. I mean, you, I want you, to, but that it's not super important to me because I'm going to be losing weight this year. So but the, see, let me also explain something to you, ma'am. That someone who's a dress size six does not need to consider plastic French toast surgery. I don't, I'm not considering surgery. D you said that. No, that was the caller before me. I'm oh, actually okay. going to lose weight. Okay, uh, well, we, if a dress size out. six, you wouldn't have to lose weight. I'm sorry. Even if it was the caller before, you wouldn't have to lose weight. So ultimately, why is this important? It's not just to, to do wild dog, man, but it's your expectations are far too high for, for where you rank. Okay. You, you get a man, an average black man earns $42,000. In due respect, you earn $69,000. You'd be very well off to get a guy who's earning forty-five dollars to $50,000 and go off and have a couple of kids, but not four. You can't afford them. A $50,000 and $70,000. Now, y'all can afford a kid or two, a kitten, a, maybe a parakeet, some goldfish, a couple <laughs> of Honda Civics. Y'all go to Rudy Tuesdays and, and, you know, Outback. I mean, this is this is your life. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I and so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And this is what I need to. I know I'm, you sound like I'm joking, but I need you to understand. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a man who's a solid, decent man. I'm not talking about a, a bum. I'm talking about an average working man who works hard for his fucking money. Okay. A solid, tax-paying, God-fearing, mother-loving, apple pie, hot dog, baseball, motherfucking citizen. And you're chuckling like I'm joking. I don't play when I'm talking about the men I respect and advocate for. And you ladies think just because you're making a little bit more money, you can laugh at these men. That's some bullshit. Especially when you're average. And you are below average. And get off my, no, just no, no, no. Take a break because I'm going to calm down. Nope, absolutely not. Sorry about that. I grew up in the I grew up in the Bible Belt in Oklahoma with a truck driving grandfather, military on both sides, and factory workers. Like my friend Obsidian, I I didn't work in the plant, but I work I, I grew up with people who worked hard for a living. Eight dollars an hour, ten dollars an hour, twelve dollars an hour. And in the middle heartland of America, there are people who, in the South in particular, people are not rich here. $70, $80 an hour. We're talking $20 an hour, $25 an hour. That's forty dollars to $50,000. And I have a real problem sitting here in, in my Tom Ford suits and candles and all the other kind of stuff. I have a real, real, real problem. When I hear women laughing, poking fun at the men who built this fucking country. You're laughing at my uncle, my grandfather, the men who serve our country, the men who dig the ditches and build the roads and fix your plumbing and everything. 
I don't take that. This is, <clears throat> we have gotten so far in the black community from what made us a community. We have no respect for our middle class. The men, and these men listen to you laugh at them. <laughs> oh my God, so little. <laughs> Ruby Tuesday and <laughs> a kitten and a goldfish. And out of respect for my platform, I'm not going to put your photo, man, but you are average at best. And your fitness is below. The man I'm talking about would have been a godsend to someone like you 80 years ago, not an insult. It's happening. And when I ask Miss Average, anytime I ask any of these women, why can't you just get an average man? Well, I feel like in order to respect the man, I got to, he got to do this or do that. And I'm like, okay, well, if you can have such a harsh outlook on most men, I find no problem having the same harsh outlook upon the things that men value. If you can look down on a man who ain't six feet tall, six figure income, six pack, college degree, right kind of job, right kind of this, right kind of that. If you can look upon that and laugh, then you should understand that the men that you want laugh back when they look at the women who say, I deserve a high value man. If, wait a minute. You bigger than Fat Albert. With blah, 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 blah. And because I didn't respond or I said, no, thank you. Oh, you got to be gay. Whoa. Okay. So what's the, what's the flip of that? Dude making minimum wage at 7-Eleven goes and hollers at an Instagram baddie. And she says, no, thank you. No, thank you. And he slaps her. Thank you. Now y'all starting to get it. This powerful conversation between Kevin Samuels and the caller serves as a reminder of the importance of empathy and appreciation for average earning men. Kevin's personal experiences and unwavering stance on respecting hardworking individuals shed light on the need to challenge societal expectations and redefine what it means to be successful. Let us take this opportunity to reflect on the contributions of everyday heroes and embrace a more inclusive and understanding approach when it comes to matters of income and social status. Join us in reevaluating our perspectives and fostering a culture of respect and appreciation for all individuals, regardless of their financial standing. Thanks for watching, and be sure to let me know your thoughts on the call in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Relationship Report for more thought-provoking content. See you in the next one.